Hey guys, I'm John. I'm Eric. And this is Knife Making Tuesday, week 55. This week, we finally get to work on some Norseman stuff. I'm really, really excited. Um, any of you who are knife guys, custom knife guys, will have heard of Rick Hinderer, and he's got his uh, Rick Hinderer lock bar stabilizer thing. I'll insert a picture right now so you can know what it looks like. And with sound effects. With zoom! <laughs> and um, we, uh, a couple months ago, I applied to Rick to get the license. It's actually a licensed thing that he licenses out to other knife makers. So I applied and I got uh, approval so that I can use them on my knives and I pay him a small royalty fee and um, it's a really genius system and I've tried to come up with my own alternative to it and I've got a couple great ideas but they've got their drawbacks whereas Rick's um, is better because of these things. I really like the fact that it's removable so that if you need to bend the lock bar you know the opposite direction you actually can. Mm -hmm. um, my ideas are more permanent and while it does the job it's permanent and I, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we're gonna machine um, a alteration of his design because I like to be creative when I can. So this is the um, Hinderer Lock Bar Stabilizer Gangam Grimsmo style uh, lock lock bar thingy. Let's get right to it. <laughs> Here on our Mighty Bite vacuum palette, we got another grid plate in. This one is tapped on every single hole for M6. A lot of you guys commented last time thinking that all those holes go through. They do not. Only the center hole goes through. These are all blind holes meant purely for, um, for screwing down stuff, not actually for the suction. All that suction comes out of the center hole. Anyway, we are just using this as a clamping surface. Notice how we have a piece of junky titanium here clamped in at three places and uh, the center hole in the vacuum fixture is plugged so it actually it does suck down and I really like the grid plate with all the screw holes because then we can clamp this thing in any position and the parts we're making are 3 8 diameter they're really tiny so we can clamp it anywhere and just choose a spot here and say okay we'll make one there and then we'll choose another spot and make one here make one here we could even probably get a few in here we can really make use of this piece of garbage basically um, and you know use it up so we don't have to use a whole big pretty sheet of titanium that I can use for handles and stuff. So we got the coat all ready to go and all the tools are zeroed in the awesome, crazy, wicked, amazing Tormac <laughs> ATC. So hopefully this is kind of where you go cross your fingers, see if it's gonna work. <laughs> it, it should work. I, I have pretty good faith in this code. Um, every time I turn on the vacuum, I got a vacuum gauge over here. Notice how it's at 10. 10 is a very low vacuum. I've got it turned down because it just doesn't need more than that. Um, it, it goes all the way up to about 23 at max vacuum, but 10 is fine for smaller stuff. And then it doesn't use so much air from the compressor, which is going to turn on any minute now. So let's get started. Here we go. We just turned the machine on, so this has to home itself. Mist is on. It's going to do a thread milling. Uh, it's going to do thread milling and thread milling kind of terrifies me because these are very expensive and very uh, very fragile. I probably should have air tested this one first, but we'll see. Yeah. 
it's cutting very slow and very, very conservative. Yeah, these are very, very conservative settings just because I've broken too many of these and they're about $55 each. I'm scared just watching them. Yeah. So, as you can see, it's, it's threading it, basically. It's going around the outside, cutting a thread profile. I'm kind of pissed. That, that does not make me happy. Hmm. I was cutting extraordinarily gentri gin gingerly. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Maybe I was going too, too light and it was like rubbing or something. Mm -hmm. um, you machinists out there might have a tip for me, something you saw. Um, darn, that's the last end mill I had, thread mill, um, I was hoping that would last me for a little while, I need to go buy like six more, so, crap, well that kind of ruins the rest of this project. So you can see right there on the left hand side of this stub, it's hard to focus on it properly, but there's kind of a, a goober. Um, a section of balled up metal and that's most likely where it broke so we're wondering if this thing needs more lubrication while thread milling um, I just had an air blast not even the coolant turned on which is probably foolish of me yeah either lubrication or flood coolant I don't know I don't know but that little balled up goober part is most likely what caused it to break now, why did that happen in the first place? We gotta figure it out. So, that pretty much ruins the rest of my video. Um, that being the second operation in a string of about eight operations on that part, uh, I'm, I'm stuck <laughs> until I get more thread mills, and that'll be a few days at least. So in a couple of days I might send you down to Lakeshore and get some more. Um, yeah. In other news, um, a couple days ago I tried to get my new oven wired up. I had to change the wiring to fit um, some of the plugs that I have and I think I screwed something up inside because something's not working right. It's not tripping the relays inside properly so I'm gonna have to call even heat and try to figure that out. But Which means my oven doesn't work and I can't heat treat all the tour blades because <laughs> that sucks. And then so uh, yesterday I drove up to city of Toronto and I um, there's a big industrial heat treating place there that does knife blades too so I dropped them all off there and they'll be done tomorrow for a very affordable price so yay yay so I mean that'll be awesome yeah. and we'll have those back tomorrow and then we can clean them up and um, yeah. hard mill them hard mill them and then sharpen them sharpen. You'll, you'll be busy the next week yay yeah so <coughs> Yeah, I'm bummed. <laughs> I had a whole rest of this video planned out. <laughs> uh, stay tuned next week. Well, so by the end of the week, all the tours will be done. And then after that, it's all Norsemen all the time. Which will be fun. Past few nights, I've stayed up on my computer. I'm kind of redesigning the Norsemen a little bit. Just little tweaks and manufacturing, uh, you know, tricks that I want to try. Uh, a lot of thread milling. And uh, I gotta figure this out. I've I've been able to thread mill G10 before, but I've never successfully thread mill, milled a metal. Um, so I gotta figure this out. I'm gonna start calling around tomorrow and talk to people who've done this before. If anybody has thread milled before successfully with tiny stuff, please send me an email or a comment or whatever. Speeds and feeds for that were uh, 2,000 RPM, two inches per minute, and it was stepping in about four separate times. I was just trying to be uber, uber conservative. Maybe too conservative. Um, so I, I don't know. 
<sighs> Got any jokes? Mm. No. I thought I had one yesterday, but... <laughs> but it was just gas? <laughs> <laughs> yes. These people are watching, they're paying attention to us. Well, they I, really shouldn't be. <laughs> I know. I feel like I need to feed them with interesting stuff to watch, but I have nothing right now, so we're just babbling. Hmm. Well, then, we're going to cut it there for this week, and uh, maybe do a midweek video, maybe not, we'll see. Probably, you should do a midweek video if you're going to be a lot of grinding and stuff. Sure. I ordered all the metal from a grinder. Yay! So that should be done tomorrow probably. And then I'm gonna make Eric build that. So. Yep. Toodles. Apologies for the lame video. Good.